once again, as Peterson goes, the Redskins go, they get another win when he performs. And I, I, I would expect that blueprint to continue. Yeah, absolutely. And I really liked how the, I actually liked Jay's play calling a lot in this game. Um, there's a couple individual play calls that I maybe would have done something different. But even on some of those, like, for instance, the third and one late I, where I would have just lined it up and given it to Peterson, they go spread. Jordan Reed's open. Alex needs to make a throw. And the concept they use is called spacing. And it's pretty simple. Just everybody go kind of find a hole and sit down. And they should have had a first down there. Um, but early in the game, getting Reed involved, getting some quick game stuff, which they haven't done a lot of, trying to get Smith in a little bit of a rhythm. And they were able to be successful. And then Peterson's first carry is a nine-yard gash right up the gut. So all of a sudden the defense is off balance. And they, they did a good job establishing the pass early in that game enough to let Peterson do his thing. And then obviously you just keep going and going and going. And, and it's such a, a fitting ending to kind of showcase everything that Peterson still has to be the most conditioned guy on the field, to be able to sustain for a 64 yard run and finish it off at his age it, and all the mileage on his legs is rather remarkable. So, so why are they not getting more out of their passing game? It, it, I, I refuse to believe that the guys aren't getting open. I refuse to believe it. Well, you shouldn't refuse to, or you, you should refuse to believe it because they are open. Right. Um, they, they are open, and Alex has is, is not been accurate. I do think he's seeing the field a little bit better the last couple of weeks. Like, at the beginning of the season, there were guys open, and he wasn't seeing them. He would come off throws or, or turn down throws uh, or, or read the wrong side of the field. Now I feel like he's making like the Paul Richardson deep ball that he, he throws on the wrong side of the safety. Mm -hmm. Right. He's open. Make the throw. He hits that. What and and you know all of a sudden you're looking at a 250 yard day instead of a 178 yard day. Um, and uh, another good point that Alex did make in terms of the stats, like tack on 50 to his passing yards because they did have a huge on their first touchdown drive a huge pass interference call mm -hmm. and that doesn't that doesn't go in the stats, but. You know, third down stuff where he's he's not necessarily reading the right spot or, um, you know, he had one where a throw was rushed because it's the one where it hit Reed in the shoulder pad and it almost yeah. got picked. Yep. Like, he's rushed because of pressure. So sometimes it's not exactly on him. But there's other a couple other times where he's just got to make a throw. And they are getting guys open. I think that's encouraging. And they're, they're starting to use Doxson in a way I wish they would have all along, understanding that for him, open is not exactly going to window he can use his body to box out and make catch more they got early and often and so i think that they're going to be able to watch this tape and find some things and and not and know like we've got to go quick game that's where we can move the football and then stuff will open up behind it and i think they've gotten away from that the last couple of weeks and i think the more you do that the more reps Alex banks, the more accurate he'll get. And this it's not going to take a giant leap. They're not going to start scoring 40 a game. But they can be obviously more productive than the back-to-back -back 20s that they've put up. Well, you know, you compare and contrast, contrast it to like the Rams, who do, do a great job of controlling tempo. And sometimes they sprint to the line of scrimmage. and then, Or sometimes they to the line of scrimmage and they snap it right away. Um, we don't do any of that. Right. And their guys always seem to be wide open. Yeah. yeah, they they did go tempo early yesterday, I remember. And it's like they're the Redskins have been so good early in games on the scripted first fifteen. And it just makes you wonder, like, once you get into the mm -hmm. the rhythm of the game and figure out you know, because the basically so the first fifteen, you try to use different personnel groupings, different formations, and get a read on how the defense is going to guard you. Right. Then you figure out what works based off what they do, and you in theory go back to that stuff. But the variety they show early in these games, I think, is what is helping them. So I, I just, I wonder if they start trying to do that more and use more variety and continue kind of along the same script of the first 15, unless you find something that's just a home run. And and then also you can moderate tempo and, and see how they react to that. And they did early in the game. I remember distinctly after the first snap, they got right back up to the line and that's something they haven't done a lot of, um, but I, I do I do wonder if they can do that because that simplifies it too. A lot of the stuff that they do is just trying to simplify the read for the quarterback, not because it's dumb, because it's easier. It's shooting fish in a barrel when you when a quarterback knows what's coming, and tempo is another tool to do that. And because of the athletes they have, obviously it'd be beneficial, and they can use a bunch of different formations with guys like Reed and Davis on the field. But I also do think they do a lot of subbing of personnel, and when you sub, you got to give the other team a chance to sub, and then it's hard to go tempo.
So the running game is carrying them, the offensive line blocking for them. How big of an injury is this thumb injury for Trent Williams? Will he be good to go by next week? Not sure. He needs the hand to grab. I know I know Joe Jacoby obviously played with the club uh, famously, but Trent, you know, I was talking to him about it yesterday, and he goes, it's pretty jacked up. Uh, he had a hard cast on it, uh, but one not like a club, one where your, your fingers are exposed. And you need to be able to grab. that Through that hard cast, he couldn't grab. And so I think it's going to be really hard for him to play um, unless it just he wraps it up and says, I don't care about the pain. I have my function, and I'm going to go. And that's possible because he's tough as nails. The good news, so to speak, here is that Ty Inseki is a way better left tackle than he is a right tackle. He is a bad right tackle. He's a good left tackle. So if you have to miss a game, you're obviously not going to have Trent Williams. Uh, and not having the Hall of Fame caliber players is never as ideal as it could be, but you at least would have a more than competent replacement at left tackle in Ty Inseki if you needed it for one week.